All right, hello and welcome to GoGate Engineering Institute, your one-stop structural engineering consulting training institute that provides you with very detailed structural engineering analysis and design of various kinds of structures, reinforced concrete structures, timber structures, steel structures, either located onshore or located, you know, in the sea, deep water, um, geotechnical engineering, and it's like today we want to look at the design of a rough foundation for a two-story structure what you can see on your screen is a two-story structure we want to teach you how to design the rough foundation in compliance with um, bs 8004 and bs 8007 as well as bs 8110 part 1 1997 so rough foundation design of a two-story structure we concentrate on this and then we we'll explain what is required in design. So let's look very carefully. This is a two-story structure because you have that at the first floor level and then that's the roof level. So you have the first floor level and that's the roof level. This is the approach view. Okay, and then this is the ground floor plan. This is the ground floor plan. It's a four-bedroom structure. There's one bedroom below um, on the ground floor. You have one bedroom on the ground floor. It's all in suit with the bathroom. And then um, on the first floor, you have three bedrooms you have one master's bedroom with a jacuzzi and a closet and then you have two other bedrooms so one bedroom on the ground floor three on the first floor we are concentrating on design of the rough foundation for this structure because a visit to site showed that the um, that the site location it showed that the terrain was so bad you had marshy soil you have cohesive or pt soil by universal um classification system it was classified that the soils was has very high plastic and properties and then the soil is such that the bearing capacity is about 75 um, kilonewton per meter square so it was decided by we the structural engineers to design a rough foundation for the structure so this is the proposed main building and then this is the um, ground floor um, profile right so this is this location is what you get to see here that is location and then that location is what you get to see on that side so we want to design the rough foundation we need to look at this very carefully we start pro okay now this is structural layout this is the foundation layout for that two-story structure the structural foundation layout um, okay so this is the superposition of the ground floor architectural layouts on the proposed structural layout so you could see the location of the ground beams you have a ground beam on grid b grid c grid c prime e prime and f prime okay um so this is the approach to the structure um this is the foundation for the approach location um there's the columns there's the columns and then there's a column there okay so that's a that's a staircase look at section a section a shows you what's going on there Okay, that's the staircase and then those are the columns. We want to design this rough foundation structure to carry the entire load, you know, from the building. So the design is to design the rough foundation, okay, to carry the entire load from the building. Note very carefully that the design of the superstructure has been done. We explained that in our subsequent videos. Um, is the reaction from the design of the superstructure, the reactions are serviceability limit states and ultimate limit states were used in design of the rough foundation. So let's look at how we proceeded in the design of the rough foundation. Okay, so this is the loading, the two-story structure. Um, we want to look at the loading for the rough foundation quickly. Um, the rough foundation is going to be subjected to its self-weight, the self-weight of the rough slab. The rough slab is 200 millimeter thick. Um, it's 200 millimeter thick. Look at the description here. All rough foundation beams are 230 by 1.1 meters that's all the grid beams and then the rough slab panels are 200 thick okay so all units are in millimeters so when we say 200 we mean that um, it's in millimeters all units are in millimeters the drawing has to be very detailed so that whoever is reading the drawing can implement carefully on site okay so um, we look very carefully the thickness 200 so the self weight of the thickness of the slab rough slab is uh, 24 times that thickness is 4.8 the finishes so you have if you look at the structure you have um, obviously you have architectural um, you have the block work and then um, 
so you have the block work within the slab panels so if you look carefully you would see so these are the slab panels for the raft now within these raft panels you have obviously you're going to have um, finishes you're going to have um, screening okay and obviously tiles based on architectural design um, requirements um, okay so those finishes you need to apply the load associated with those finishes how do you get the loads um, BS 6399 provides a provision 6399 part 1 um, 6399 part 1 says that um, okay it says that um, in buildings where the use of other partitions that we say is an additional imposed load should be specified for floor area so this imposed loads um, is being stated that should be applied on floor layers now this may be taken as uniform distributed load of not less than one third of the load okay or where you have partitions for floor offices this additional this uniform distributed partition load should not be less than one kilonewton per meter square so this is the partition load that um, you know is allowed for by the code so finishes we took as one kilometer square and then um, additional loads for wall partition it was taken as 1.2 so summation of these loads gives the total dead load as 7 kilonewton per meter square the imposed load is taken as um, 1.5 kilonewton per meter square imposed loads to ca capture walkway requirements taken as 1.5 kilonewton meter square and obtained from the same code reference the self the self weight of the rap beams okay is to be calculated automatically by start so long as you model the rap beams correctly and then um, we specify geometric properties and its corresponding density. Um, 2 to 5 mm thick wall load, um, inclusive of rendering, is taken as um, 10.91. So this was calculated from the self weight of um, block work plus associated rendering on both sides, 13 mm rendering. Self weight of block work is taken as um, 2.87 kilos per meter square plus rendering is taken as 0.3 kilos per meter square add on both sides, 0.6. That gives us 3.47. And the height of the block work is taken as um, 3.15. So if we look at the architectural design and we look at a section, it gives us the height of the block wall. Okay. Um, if we measure this out directly, Okay, so it gives us 3.15 kilometer per meter square. So that's how we establish that load. So let's look at how we did this and start quickly. Um, this is the entire structure. This is the entire structure. Um, look very carefully. This is the raft foundation. Okay, that was rough foundation. We could see carefully if we explain this, you would see um, these are the grid beams corresponding to what we can see on the structural layouts. So you have grid B, one, two, three, four, and five. Sorry, that's the first floor. This is the foundation layout. So let's look at the grid beams. So you have one, two, three, four, and five. These are the grid beams. Okay. Um, if you look at start, you can see the grid beams correctly. You can see the columns. This has to be modeled accurately. Um, and this is the raft slab panels properly discretized. And this is the um, this is the staircase, longitudinal staircase coming from the ground floor up onto the first floor. So we model this um, accurately. These are modeled using the plate elements. So that's the rough slab panel modeled correctly. You ensure that your dimensional information is accurate. Okay, if we look carefully, we we'll would see this is the raft beams. These are the dimensions of the raft beams. Um, from point to point, we have them as shown in the structural details. So we have 3.22, 3.81, 3.61. So 3.22, 3.81, 3.61, and 4.02. It's not be 
modeled correctly so that is from there to there so we we'll check from here to here that's 3.22 that to there 3.81 from here to here 3.69 and then from here to here is 4.02 okay so that's correct um, the next thing is to assign your properties so this is for the raft um, beams the raft beams look at very carefully they are um, 1.1 by 230 as shown on the structural drawings 1.1 by 230 um, 230 by 1.1 Okay, so we assign the properties to the raft beams and then we give the raft beams the corresponding offsets from the slab. Okay, because instead members are modeled from centroid to centroid, so you would have to provide the corresponding offsets that the raft beams make from the centroid of the slab. So if you look at the offsets, the offsets are applied correctly from the centroid of the members, okay, downwards. So we have negative global coordinate system offset for the beams, okay, in the y direction, and then we have that for all the raft beams. Okay, the next thing is to look at the loads. Um, these are the loads we applied on the design of the raft slab. The first one is the self weight of the raft slab. We said the self weight is going to be calculated automatically by start, so long as we specified the self weight um, load factor um, minus one in the y, in the y direction. The partition allowance, we talked about the partition, um, so there's going to be block work around where we have the rough slab. All the partition allowance catered for at 1.2 km per meter square as specified in the load calculation was also applied. We also have finishes of 1 km per meter square. So these are the finishes also applied on the entire slab. And then this is the imposed load on the raft slab, okay, due to work with human access. So human access, there'll be continuous human access on the ground floor. Okay, so this is the imposed load permitted by the code due to human access. Okay, then the staircase, so the staircase was designed together with the raft slab. So you also have imposed loads on the staircase, okay, was applied together. Imposed loads on the staircase. Um, the column loads. So these column loads are the column reactions from the design of the superstructure. So the reactions from design of the structure was done on a separate analysis file. So these are the various reactions. So these reactions are applied correctly, corresponding to the columns. So you can see them, you know, they were obtained from the analysis of the superstructure and it was applied accordingly. So these are the column loads under serviceability limit state consideration. And these are the column loads under ultimate limit state conditions. Okay, so the column load under ultimate limit state condition is automatically that's under serviceability limit state times 1.422. Okay, so um, load case 6 times 1.422 was used to get the ultimate limit state load combination. Ultimate limit state concentrated loads from the column then we then do our load combination which is um, dead load plus life load at uh, at serviceability limit states serviceability limit states factor of safety in accordance with the code of practice bs8110 is 1.0 so you would have a 1.0 times all the corresponding dead loads so these are dead Look at one, two, and one, two, four are dead loads. So one, two, four are dead loads, and then two, five, and six are imposed loads. So we have the um, factors of safety, which is one times the corresponding dead and imposed. Then we then you know do the same for ultimate limit state load consideration. Um, ultimate limit state load combination is one times load case seven because load case seven is, are, is already a factored ultimate limit state load. Okay, so you just um, repeat that same you know load case one times one point seven. When you do that, to perform an analysis. When you run the analysis, you go to the post processor. 
and look at the output. So when you do an analysis of a rough slab, the first thing you want to look at is to ensure that the maximum earth contact pressure is less than the alignment capacity of the soil. For this analysis, the alignment capacity of the soil taken for this analysis is 75 kilonewton per meter square. Okay, so when we look at, um, you go to plate, you go to base pressure, okay, apply. So start report the contact at pressure beneath the rough slab. So we can see the contact at pressure distribution carefully beneath the rough slab. We can see that the maximum values we are having is about 70.5 kilonewton per meter square around the slab edges right and we have it majorly distributed up for, for about 26.4 kilometer per meter square within the span and um, we have between 48.5 and um, 52.9 around this region so the earth pressure automatically varies significantly around the rough slab and then but the maximum of all of this is about 70.5 kilonewton per meter square at the edges and this is less the library and capacity of the soil so the slab is satisfactory okay so the rough foundation is satisfactory and then you then proceed with the structural design thank you very much for your time always follow us on this link on this channel we will be providing more information on various structural engineering design thank you